Hey, hi everyone. Welcome once again to this short tutorial. Here again is your host. I am Dr. Moise Kakiani, prosthodontist from Mumbai, India. Friends, in this short little video, I will help you understand the concept of the amount of tooth that needs to be prepared for different prosthetic materials that are available to our disposal. Friends, in the previous video, we understood about the different margin architecture and the different birds that are used to prepare the different prosthetic materials that are available to us. In this, we will try to understand the quantity or the amount of tooth that needs to be prepared. Here again, I've kind of divided them into PFMs and metal free. So first, let's look at PFM based restorations. Uh, the first thing that I want to highlight in this video to all of your friends is I have numbered these in terms of the different areas of the tooth and these numbers eventually here in millimeters will tell you the amount of tooth reduction required. Uh, friends, these are all average values. These are idealistic numbers that we need on the basis of the prosthetic material. Having said this, not often do we get the exact same values each time in our patient. What's important to understand is that we take forward the base essential understanding from these numbers and try to achieve preparations as close as possible to these. Let me draw attention to the fact here, friends, that the buccal margin of the preparation here is a modified shoulder whilst the palatal aspect is a deep chamfer. Here you can clearly see that you have a metal coping which is then layered with ceramic. Here you only have a palatal metal margin. First things first, at the margin here, what is important to understand is that we have the metal coping which is layered by first the opaque layer following which comes the dented ceramic, the enamel ceramic and finally the glaze layer. What is important to understand in this friends is a definite thickness to the margin needs to be prepared so that the technician can provide a prosthesis that merges with the preparation margin. If you look closely at this figure, it reads 1 to 1.2 of a millimeter, which is essentially the width of your preparation at the buccal margin. Now 1 to 1.2 may actually seem very small friends, but when you equate it on a tooth, that's, this is a sizable, sizable number. On the labial face here, you need a little more than 1.5 millimeters. This is a fairly aesthetic region. Maximum aesthetics comes from the incisal edge, friends, which is where we need about 2 millimeter reduction. The reduction becomes a little less towards the lingual or the palatal margin, becoming the least towards the final margin area, which is about 0.5 of a millimeter. Let's look at a similar preparation for a posterior. Once again, it's a PFM restoration. Here again, it's a modified shoulder towards the buckle and a lingual metal collar, which is in uh, a deep chamfer. Only and only a 0.5 millimeters there. Still, the amount remains the same here as 1 to 1.2 of a millimeter. What is important, however, to understand in posteriors is the amount of occlusal clearance that you need to give. On a functional cusp, you always have slightly more reduction, which is about 2 millimeters towards the non-functional cusp. The reduction is a little less, which is about 1.5 of a millimeter. Now, what if we are planning to give a patient something that is called as a facing prosthesis? Still, the underlying structure is a metal coping. Your friends, the labial aspect and the incisal edge, the preparation protocols remain the exact same. Where is it different? towards the palatal incline. Here you need to reduce less because all the way through the margin and the guiding surface you only have metal. And metal on an average as we know requires about 0.5 millimeter reduction which means we are conserving tooth structure whilst providing adequate aesthetics from the labial surface. Where will I do this prosthesis? Classically those individuals where clearance on the palatal aspect is difficult to achieve. Have we not seen these patients who come in with deep bites where it is extremely difficult for us to provide the ideal amount of room for the technician to build porcelain? Don't forget, in such situations, you may very well give a palatal margin in metal. This is for anterior teeth. Imagine those individuals who come in to you with short clinical crowns or those who have a very high masticatory force. You're concerned that your porcelain may fracture or your prosthesis may keep coming out again and again. 
An option in such a situation, of course, is a PFM facing towards the posteriors as well, where the buccal aesthetic area is porcelain, whilst the occlusal and the lingual is in metal. Here again, the amount of reduction on the functional and the non-functional cusp goes down by about 0.5 of a millimeter, which means you conserve more tooth structure. And again, towards the lingual margin, it's again down to a 0.5. So here again, you reduce less but you still provide a prosthesis that has good and sturdy performance in your patient's mouth. Now let's look at a metal free option, first anteriors, again metal free here could be a porcelain fused to zirconia, it may also be an Emax restoration. Classically both these margins are deep chamfer as we saw in the previous video friends. Here again, the amount of reduction is less because in general, if you have a metal coping that needs to be masked with an opaker, you need more preparation. If your underlying coping is providing some amount of aesthetics to you, the amount of preparation automatically decreases, thereby conserving more tooth structure. Classically, on an average between 0.2 or 0.5 of a millimeter less preparation, is required for a metal free as against the PFM. That's why instead of the 1 to 1.2 that we needed here for a PFM, we need only between 0.8 to 1 millimeter. This is on the labial margin and the labial surface where you actually need more reduction for aesthetics. That's why what you see on number 2 is between 1.2 to 1.5, which is again about 0.3 millimeter less than PFM. In sisal edge, you still have to reduce the same amount which is 2 millimeters because this is where friends the aesthetics of a tooth lies. Provided you give your technician adequate amount of space there, he will be able to build that kind of youthful appearances which is the incisal edge halo as we all know as. Here towards the lingual of the palatal again you can be more conservative, you can go down to between 0.5 to 0.8 of a millimeter. This is more than sufficient because this is not a very high aesthetic area first. And second, even in smaller dimensions, most metal free restorations can still perform the function that is desired out of them. What about posteriors? Generally again in posteriors, the preparation amount required is less. Thereby here again with deep chamfers, you are between 0.5 to 0.8 of a millimeter towards the margins. And again towards the cusp tips, you need only about 1.5 instead of 2 which is what you need for a PFM and here you need only about 1 millimeter, which is again 0.5 millimeters less than what is required for a PFM. So if I were to just summarize friends for you guys, first metal free restorations are more conservative and they are easy to prepare because all margins are deep chamfer. PFMs on the other hand are more aggressive and they require for you to prepare multiple different margins in accordance to the protocols for preparation design. More and more as time progresses friends, we are moving away from the PFM world towards the metal free world, especially because a lot of Emacs based restorations today provide for brilliant aesthetics and if they are bonded to the underlying tooth structure, they are extremely rigid, extremely strong and they will survive the test of time, even in those patients who may have heavy masticate reload. Here again friends, small little tips and tricks to help you understand what you should do or could do to help improve the longevity of the prosthesis that you deliver for the patients. I hope you enjoyed this video, please do share uh, with your friends and until we meet again, wishing all of you all the very best. Bye bye.